Hey everybody, I'm Bob Jenkins and welcome to this historic facility. NASCAR's oldest super speedway built back in 1950. Fans come here from all over the nation to see this track. About 20 yards to my left is Highway 151 and about 20 yards to my right is the Joe Weatherly Stock Car Hall of Fame. And then just beyond that, the racetrack itself. Ask any driver and they'll tell you that to add a win to Darlington, their resume means a great deal. Let's get more on this historic facility as we go inside the gates. Turn number two. Here's Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, Bob, there's a certain mystique here, a presence, if you will, that you can feel, if not see, when you enter this historic facility. Now, this track, too tough to tame, earned its reputation over the years from its unique configuration. It wasn't planned that way 41 years ago when Harold Bradenton decided to build a racetrack here in South Carolina. In fact, it happened quite by accident. And we'll show you what happened. Now, off to my right, about 200 yards, is Jack Ramsey's fish pond. That fish pond over there, which still has the no trespassing signs bordered around its perimeter, is the reason they had to taper the racetrack here. This racetrack would have been a perfect oval, but instead, Jack Ramsey said, hey, that's my favorite fish pond. I don't want any racetrack on my fish pond, so you guys better make it short up at this end. So now here in turns one and two, on the east end of the racetrack, it is tapered. It is egg-shaped. This is turns one and two here, very pointed, whereas turns three and four, the perfect oval, much more blunted. 23 degrees of banking here, 25 degrees of banking here. It is this unusual configuration that's made this track too tough to tape. And over the years, the drivers have had to maintain a lot of concentration here. This little egg-shaped oval has brought a lot of people in contact with the guardrail and with the wall. But if you'd lose concentration just for one moment, whoops. Well, it looks like you could end up in a million pieces. Hey, guys, how do you like them? Scrambled or over easy? Jerry, I'm not sure the easy part works anywhere on this racetrack. It is one of the toughest circuits they run on. Benny Parsons and I are standing back in the middle of the field where the cars are lined up 15th through 20th where there are some pretty heavy hitters. Pretty heavy hitters. Eight of the last nine Trans-South 500 winners are qualified between 15th and 20th. And this race, folks, has never been won qualifying farther back than 10th. He's talking about over easy or scramble. I think scramble is the word as far as qualifying goes. I don't think there's any question about it. You can see these fellows scrambling up through the field. Dale Earnhardt has had a hot hand this year. He's leading the Winston Cup point standings. He won at Atlanta a few weeks ago. But there's another fellow who has also had a good year up to this point, and a fellow who is in a new ride that's up front with Dr. Dick Bergren, the editor of Stock Car Racing Magazine. As the middle of the pack has some hot shots, the series' newest rising star, Ernie Irvin, has followed up his strong third-place run at Atlanta with a third-place qualifying effort here, his best ever. Yet all eyes are on the pole. In a record-breaking run, Jeff Bodine has put Junior Johnson's Ford in the top spot. Bodine has had a great season so far. He's been in contention to win three out of the four races at the end. He was fast enough to win the fourth. You're the only guy that's led all four races. You're the guy they're going to chase today. The only thing you haven't done is win. Is today the day? Well, we hope so, but we're really proud for Junior Johnson to win this pole for Budweiser Ford. The whole team, it's a relief to get this Bush Bowl away this early in the season, but, you know, now our main goal is to win this race, and we're going to try to do that. I'd like to say to hi to all, all the race fans out here in America. Kathy, Matt, and Barry, I love you. This guy's got a tough road to hoe. He's won here three times at Bush Grand National, never in Winston Cup. Bob Jenkins? And it's the first poll for Junior Johnson on a super speedway since June of 1987 at Pocono, and the first at Darlington since 1972 when Bobby Allison took the poll for the Southern 500. It's time. Let's go to the start-finish line. And now, ladies and gentlemen, to give the command for the most famous words in auto racing, here's the Grand Marshal for the Trans South 500, Ronnie McDowell. Hit a one. Stop your engine! Cars and drivers fire to life, getting set to go for 500 miles here at the track too tough to tame. Darlington International Raceway under bright, beautiful, sunshiny skies on this Sunday afternoon. Stand by. We've got an exciting afternoon of racing coming up for you here at Darlington, South Carolina. Our Speed World coverage of the Trans South 500 is being brought to you by Quaker State. The Big Q is one tough motor oil. 
by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Goodyear Eagle Tires, the best-selling performance radials in the world. And the cars will be competing on radial tires for the first time at this facility this afternoon. We'll be back to take a look at the starting lineup right after this. South 500 just moments away. All 40 cars lined up on pit road. You know, you used to think of this as a regional or a southeastern series, but look at this. Those are the drivers in the states represented in the top 15 starting positions. Only two of them from North Carolina, and you can see the other states represented here at Darlington. Now, here's the starting lineup for today's race. On the pole, at 162.996 miles an hour, the Budweiser Ford from Shemong, New York, is Jeff Bodine, number 11. Outside of the front row will be Mark Martin from Batesville, Arkansas, and the Folgers Ford, 162.399. In the second row, Ernie Urban, his second time in the Kodak Film Oldsmobile, he qualified at 161.445. And on the outside of the second row, the Quaker State Buick, number 26, driven by Brett Bodine from Shemung, New York. Going to row number three now, it's Sterling Marlin in the Sunoco Oldsmobile car number 94. He's from Columbia, Tennessee. And outside will be Ken Schrader from Fenton, Missouri in the Kodiak Chevrolet car number 25. In seventh position will be Greg Sachs in the number 46 car, the City Chevrolet, and uh, you'll recognize this as one of the Days of Thunder cars, but they're not in this race to do anything for the movie. They're in the uh, race to race. Kyle Petty will start number 42 outside of the fourth row. Michael Waltrip starts inside row number five, and then Ricky Rudd in car number five. Going to row number six, it's Rusty. Wallace in 27 and Rob Moroso in number 20. The seventh row consists of Davey Allison in 28 and Alan Kowicki in number seven. The eighth row has Dale Earnhardt in number three who won the Southern 500 last year. Darrell Waltrip in number 17. The ninth row Bill Elliott, car number nine and Neil Bonnet in number 21. In row number 10 will be Morgan Shepard, who finished second at Atlanta a couple of weekends ago in number 15, and Harry Gannon, number 13. Harry's the defending champion of this race. The 11th row is Dick Trickle in number 66, and Bobby Hillen in number 8. Rick Mast in number 2, and Daytona 500 winner Terry Cope in number 10 make up row number 12. In the 13th row is Richard Petty in number 43, and Rick, Rick Wilson in 75. In the 14th row, it's Hut Strickland, 51, and Terry Labonte in number one. Hut Strickland, another one of those Days of Thunder cars. Jack Pennington in 47, and Buddy Baker in number 90 there in row number 15. The 16th row has Butch Miller in 98, and Chad Little in number 19. Row 17, it's Jimmy Spencer in 57, and Dave Marcus in 71. Going on to row number 18 now, it's number 12, Mike Alexander, and 01, Mickey Gibbs. The 19th row, J.D. McDuffie in number 70, and Jimmy Means in number 52. And in row number 20 will be Dick Johnson in number 38, the Australian, and H.B. Bailey in car number 36. Those that miss the field, Mark Stahl, Mike Potter, and Norm Benning. Those three cars could not make the starting lineup. Now... Let's take a look at the track too tough to tame. It's 1.366 miles in length. The pole lap time was 30.170 seconds, and the speed was 162.996. The banking between 22 and 25 degrees will go 367 laps this afternoon, and they'll be able to go 70 to 75 laps before they have to come in for a fuel stop. Our in-car cameras this afternoon are uh, with uh, Dick Trickle, the Phillips 66 race cam. This team, of course, owned by Cale Yarborough, who lives just down the road in Timmonsville, South Carolina. And there is our face cam that will show us the pictures of Dick as he tries to win this race. Harry Gant will also carry one of our in-car cameras. And it is mounted on his helmet. Our in-car camera is actually an on-person camera, so what he's going to be seeing, you will see as the afternoon goes along. And Bobby has a good view there right now, but as that windshield gets pitted later on in the afternoon, it won't be quite that clear. You can notice how he uh, kind of leans to one side as he goes through that banking. And only Harry again has a neck strong enough to run our little camera. He doesn't even use a neck strap. That camera only weighs two ounces, by the way, so it's really not noticeable at all mounted on the side of Harry Gant's helmet. That should make some real good pictures this afternoon. And our other in-car camera is being carried by what I think you could term a sensation in Winston Cup racing. He took that uh, number four car to the front of the field at Atlanta a couple of weeks ago.